Hi, and welcome to the 5-Minute Business Boost, where you get to choose your 5-Minute Investment. I'm your host, Sam Hicks, and I'll be discussing topics under the headings of business development, marketing, photography, and much more. Today, I'm finally getting around to reviewing four books. These reviews have been done in isolation over the last year, but this week I pulled them together into AI and asked AI then to clean it up and make it look consistent. Most of all, most not if all of these books should be available from the usual channels, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, Book Depository, Dimex, Australia and Booktopia, and potentially online at Audible, Apple Books and Google Play. So the four books that I'm talking about today have all had an impact on my business life in one way or the other. So the four books that I'm talking about today is Permission Marketing by Seth Godden, Welcome to the Age of Emotion by Michael Langdon, Small Business Big Opportunity by Census and Rob Harnett, and The Customer by Bob Ansett. So the first up is Permission Marketing by Seth. Now, Seth, a lot of people know he's a renowned author, he's an entrepreneur, he's a marketing consultant, he's bigger than Ben Hur. He's known for his thought provoking and often controversial ideas on marketing, business, and creativity. Godden has written numerous best selling books, including The Purple Cow, The Dip, and Lichpin. I must admit, I have many of his books in hard copy paperback and on apps on my phone. I just, I find his books easy to read, and yes, while they're American based, They have so many gold nuggets within the pages that can be applied to any size business. It just makes sense. Anyway, so his permission marketing book is a seminal work in the field of marketing, particularly in the digital age that we are all operating in. The core concept is that businesses should focus on building relationships with customers who want to hear from them rather than bombarding them with unwanted messages. And this is achieved by obtaining permission from customers to communicate with them rather than the traditional interruption marketing. Now, the key takeaways from the book for me were, is really discussing in that big chapters around the shift from interruption marketing to permission marketing and the actual opportunities that it actually creates from that. And he identifies all those opportunities throughout that book and following on from that chapter. He also, I think for me, was really giving me this big takeaway about the importance of value in what you're giving, what you're offering, the role of creating trust, maintaining that trust, and that role of the personal relationship level. My favourite and most ballsy quote was from the book, fire 70% of your clients and watch your profits go up. When I read that, I nearly spat my coffee out and I laughed, but Chapter four does explain the reasons why and the benefits. And trust me, knowing Seth, you'll read it and you'll be totally convinced too. The second book is Welcome to the Age of Emotion by Michael Langdon. Now, Michael is a marketing strategist and author who specializes in emotional branding. His work really focuses on the power of emotion in consumer decision making and how brands can leverage those emotions to build stronger connections with their audience. So how does he do this? Well, he helps brands increase conversion rates through data-driven video strategies that connect consumers to product. And in his book, Michael argues that in our increasingly connected world, emotions play a crucial role in business success. He emphasizes the importance of understanding and leveraging that emotional connection with customers using video. I was attracted to this book because as the increase of video marketing is an all-time high, this book is a really great how-to guide like he covers it from a to z it's jam-packed with value and he talks about how to be competitive in the world of online marketing now his real-time experience speaks volumes in the book like he has some really cool things that he has done been involved with and these insights from those actions and those activities are absolutely gold. So make sure you pick out this book. So the key takeaways for me include the power of emotional storytelling, which he is so strong on, the importance of having empathy. Now, this is woven throughout the book. You'll understand it if you read it. And that role of being authentic and being you as a business owner, and of course, using video as a tool to be relevant and competitive. 
My favourite quote is around the message, why are you producing this video? We probably all need to ask that question each time. And for me, it's always I ask business owners who are clients or new clients, and I always say to them, what is your why? Why are you doing this? For me, I'm a business advisor because why, when I was first starting out, there was nobody there to help me. There were no programs. There was literally no support. If I hadn't had strong female mentors in my life at the time and my father pushing me, I probably wouldn't be in business all these years later. Okay, so the next book is Small Business, Big Opportunity by Census and Rob Harnett. Now, this is an interesting one. This book was given me back in 2006. Yeah, 2007 when I attended a workshop sponsored by Telstra. Now, I didn't give the book much thought at the time because, you know, when you sort of get a little bag of goodies and you sort of go through it and go, oh, yeah, got it. and I put it aside. But then some weeks later, I actually read it and it's been a mainstay, mainstay, <laughs> a mainstay on the bookcase since then. And I refer to it often if I'm looking for something. Now, Census these days is now Thrive Australia. I think they got bought out in 2021. But back in the day, Census was a leading Australian directory marketing service company. So think of the white and yellow pages for our older business listeners who are tuning in today. So they partnered up with authors to published book back in the day on business and marketing, including this one with Rob Harnett. Now, Rob is an interesting little man in himself. He's a motivational keynote and conference speaker who energizes, enthuses and inspires his listeners. His books, according to Google, are about leadership change, positivity and resilience. If you Google him, you will find him. And like most, he's on LinkedIn. And I think in sort of having a bit of a snoop around about his activities and what he's doing, I think he's best known for his mindset, specialization in sales. Anywho, this book provides practical advice for small business owners looking to grow their operations. The book covers a wide range of topics from marketing to sales to finance and management. And yes, woven in amongst it, you know, all the hints around advertising with the old yellow pages. But if you move away from that, there's some really valuable takeaways. So the key takeaways for me, and I sound like I'm banging on about this, but the importance of a strong business plan the power of digital marketing, and we all know this these days, the value of networking and the value of each customer. And there's some really good topics and chapters on around understanding the value of your customer and he gets into the formulas and so forth which are really interesting to read and he's also a big one around database management you know getting that old email up and even back then he was banging on about having that database management in excel scribbled on a piece of paper whatever but you maintained a list of customers so the best quote for me was around website strategy what do you want to achieve, the leads, service, customer journey, your other things, and who will be looking after it? So basic fundamentals of having an online presence with your website. So I really enjoyed that book and I still do to this day. Now this one, I've left the classic one to last because this book, book and I've got this in hard copy and it's one of my earliest business book purchases Um, and I actually scribbled inside the cover that I purchased in 1990. Do not do the maths. Well, you're going to do the maths. So it's about 34 years old. (laughs) Yikes. But this book is called The Customer by Bob Ansett. So for those who don't know Bob, Bob is an Australian businessman and entrepreneur who founded Budget Rent-A-Car. Yes, now I know he was born in America, but he's well and truly ours now, so we'll just call him the Aussie. His book, The Customer, is considered a classic in the field of customer service because he's been, he shares his insights and his experience in building successful customer-centric businesses. Today, he's in his 90s. And when I had a bit of a look around for him and had a look on his website, um, this was a couple of interesting facts and figures I found. So his website states the story of how he built budget rent-a-car from scratch into a $400 million international business. Now, people, this was way before the internet. Um, And then, of course, he was overtaken by a financial crisis, but it's been well documented in his best two selling books, Bob Ann said an autobiography and the customer. I think for me, 
it was really around him being a business owner and, you know, documenting everything that he does, whether it be successful or unsuccessful. But it was really around his advocacy for small businesses. And he headed up campaigns against the fringe benefit tax and capital gain tax. And he fiercely encouraged deregulation and fought hard to change the two airline system in Australia. And I think for any business owner, putting your weight figuratively behind a subject or a topic that affects or impacts small business owners is really commendable. Anyway, back to the book. In its pages, ANSET stresses the importance of putting the customer at the centre of everything a business does. Again, this book, like Langdon, speaks volumes with real life examples and his own reflections and actions at a time. And it is a really interesting read now historically. But anyway, key takeaways for me included... And we know a lot of these today. He was a little bit before his time. But the customer is always king. You must understand the importance of listening. You must understand the role of employee engagement. And you must have a holistic approach for communication because it's about the whole team, not just you, especially if you're employing people or working with suppliers. It's really around communication. So my favourite was on page 114 where he called his own company to ascertain the level of customer service and how they welcomed a customer on the phone. I laughed out loud when I read that page and I still remember it and I've actually scribbled all over the book um, in highlighter because I just could not believe that he did his own, I suppose, secret customer thing and, um, you know, rang up and pretended to be a client. Um, My learning of smiling before you answer the phone as far as customer service goes, I think is being learned from him all those years ago. And that still reigns strongly with me all these years later. And a lot of the times what I do is a bit of an insight. I have really gorgeous, lovely nicknames or happy photos of people on my phone. So when they do ring, I'm already thinking, oh, this is going to be a great conversation. So I'm already smiling before I pick up the phone. Anyway, so Sam, what about all these four books? What is the key takeaways overall? So I think that these books bring quite a bit to the table for small business owners. Now, while each of these books offers in new, uh, unique insights, you know, they're different authors, they've got different backgrounds, different experiences, there's common themes. So the three for me is around relationship building, customer-centric approach and leveraging technology. So... The first one, all four books emphasise the importance of building strong relationships with customers and that can be achieved through permission marketing, emotional connections and exceptional customer service. The customer-centric approach, now this is not new, people have been sprouting out about this for years and years and years, but it's a good reinforcement for for us all. Businesses should focus on understanding and meeting the needs of their customers. This requires active listening, empathy, and a customer-first culture. And the final one is leveraging technology. Digital tools and platforms can be used to improve marketing, sales, operations, and customer service. Small businesses, and we need to, and I know it's hard sometimes because we don't like change, but us small business owners must embrace technology to stay competitive. Anyway, I hope that inspires you. What are you reading at the moment? Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the 5-Minute Business Boost. For more information, follow me on socials, sign up for my newsy, or check out my website to see how we can work together to reach your small business goals. Remember, anything is possible, especially in the northeast of Victoria. Until next time, cheerio.